Okay. That's it? Uh, I said, uh, <laughs> huh? Question. Question. Uh, I know how, much, how long your hours are that you put in uh -huh. at uh, the SUV. Yeah. And uh, I know everything that you're going on. How do you still find the time to do your music? How do you still find the time to be creative? Well, I, I do music to remain sane. I act for the money. You know, because acting basically you're doing someone else's vision. You know, it's like you get an instruction on what to do, lines, marks, and you do what they do. And your, your agenda is to try to make the director happy. But that's not really you. When you're doing music, it's all you. You create the show, you create the music, you create the image. So music is more 100%. It's not, I mean, maybe if I was in a boy band and someone was making the words for me, it would be different. But the rap, it's all about it being their own words. So yeah, it's kind of like loud. I think everyone should do something that's 100% them. Like, I don't care what job you got. Maybe you should paint. Maybe you should do photography. But you need to do something in your life that's 100% you. That'll keep you sane. Question? I find time. I mean, there is time. Just, you just make time for things you love. Questions? What's up, baby? How you doing? All right. That Law and Order episode that was really inspired by the same line episode yeah. was really heartfelt. And I saw you on the screen and it seemed like something else. Now that's just good acting. <laughs> <laughs> good acting. But I mean, what, is, what is it about that, that particular topic that really galvanizes people and makes such a riveting episode still? Well, what happens in the world, certain things will happen and you can check your friends really quickly and you can tell how they feel. Every once in a while you have to do something that will polarize the people so that you can figure out if that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like a little girl could get raped in your building and you check around and one guy doesn't seem to think there's a problem with it. But well, that's a good, now you know about this particular person. So every once in a while certain things will happen. And I think that the Trayvon thing, you know, everybody knows that possibly could have been them. And it's one of those things where, you know, I mean, in my opinion, when you're dealing with someone who hadn't broke the law, hadn't done anything wrong, now you're trying to convince me that out of nowhere he decided to try to kill this man. I might, I might be whooping your ass to the point you think I'm going to kill you, but I'm not trying to kill you. You understand? He's getting the ass whooping. Thing. People got to learn how to take ass whooping. But uh, it polarized America. Now, law and order, we don't do the exact thing. We just, we use it and it motivates us. We actually whip Paula Dean in there and made like a stew, you know? <laughs> but it's, it's entertainment and our job is to create a story that you don't know what the answer is going to be. And one of the keys why I love law and order is even when the cops bust the people, the legal system might not win. And that's how it really goes. So, you know, the show is very interesting because you don't know what's going to happen. In our show, she got away. And I think at the end of my line was, that's just how it is. Question? Hi. Uh, hi, I'm Angelica, and this is Diana from Indie News at Noon. Um, what advice would you give to musicians who are trying to get into television or film? Musicians that are trying to get into television? Yeah, why not? They want to be a jack-of-all-trades kind of person. I mean... It's all numbers, really. So first, if you want to be a musician, be, be big enough musician that you hit the radar of television. That's what happened with me. I got into acting because I was a big enough artist that New Jack City, there weren't enough young black actors. Wesley Snipes had only did major league. So they said, well, these kids are selling millions of records. Maybe it'll translate to film. Now there's a lot of young actors, so that may not work. But when people ask me, well, I want to get into movies like you, I'm like, okay, go sell 10 million records. And then they might, they'll put Chris Brown in a the movie, they'll put stars in movies. Uh, and then take whatever you're trying to do seriously. You just because just you think you can act, I think I'm just now getting it, and I've been doing it 20 years. It's, it's a craft. It's difficult. I mean, when you see people like Daniel Day-Lewis doing it, it's not that easy. I mean, people see reality and they think that's easy. Yeah, reality's easy. But acting, when you gotta go word for word, you can't go off script. 
you got to have some brain cells. Thank you. What's your connection to CBG? Okay, this is how I ended up here in this basement. Uh, <laughs> I performed at CBGB's back in the day with body count. And it was an honor to be able to perform at CBGB, which is kind of like a rite of passage to rock bands, punk bands, people in New York know about CBGB. It's the equivalent of like I played the film more wet. I played the film more wet. So you're on the same stage Jimi Hendrix was on, you know. Or if you played Apollo, you're in the same dressing room James Brown was in. So certain places have history that you need to respect. You know, certain venues are are, are like sacred ground. And CBGBs was one of them. Now they're honoring Seymour Stein this year. Seymour Stein was the guy that signed me. Sire, but nobody thought West Coast could rap. And then, I, I think everybody in this room, you guys, if you don't know who Seymour Stein is, you should give away your CBGB tag. But he also signed Ramon's Talking Head Ministry. You know, he had me at Depeche Mode. We had lots of groups, but it's very eclectic. And he's a true A&R man. He's a guy that signed people because he believed they were artists. He told me I sounded like Bob Dylan, you know? And, uh, I remember when I was getting signed by Seymour, he played Calypso music to me. He said, do you understand that? I'm like, nah. He said, this thing about issues in Trinidad and this, that, and the other. He said, just because you don't understand it doesn't remove the value from it. It just means you don't understand it. Just like I may not understand hip hop, it doesn't remove the value. It just means I don't understand it, but I know there's a value to it. And that's why he signed me. And uh, I got $40,000 and sold close to a million records. And uh, God bless Seymour Stein. But not, and now, when CBGBs was doing this thing they're doing around town, they hit me and they said they wanted Body Count to perform. Body Count is recording a new album right now, and that's not ready. We have a show in, in uh, next month in, in, in Texas. And it's going to be everything just to get ready because we got to put the new music. We just finished a new album called Manslaughter. We got to put that together. So the lady came over, they were shooting the thing, and they were like, we really wish you could be part of CBGB's thing. And I was like, well, I could rap. And she's like, that would be wonderful. And here we are. And I think it's kind of cool that it's a really small, intimate zone, because this is where hip hop started. Hip hop didn't really start in the big stadiums and the arenas and stuff. It started in underground, jump off just like this. So tonight's going to be crazy. I just, I'm, I'm happy about it. You know? Even though this is, uh, I wasn't expecting to see all you motherfuckers here in my sound <laughs> Sound checks is like, I'm naked, like, you know, like, damn, I'm gonna mess up and shit. That's not, you know, you want people to see the show. Like, you know, I think y'all understand that question. Yes, um, in the uh, history of uh, your career, you've done a lot of music. So I want to be first, 
So I sit around with my boys and say, well, how can we do something that hasn't been done? I, I just can't do, it's corny to me. You know, it's like decide I want to sell crack today. <laughs> Too late. Question? Question? Yeah, uh, you've been on SVU for 13 years. 15. 15 years, my bad. Come on, man. Don't, don't. <laughs> I'm short change. I, actually, short change. I actually came in the last episode of the first season. All right. So yeah. I'm part of the first season. And we know that Richard Bells is leaving. How much longer do you think you're going to stay around? I'm going to stay till they throw my black ass off. <laughs> I'm a black man. I don't jump off a boat when it's still, when it's still sailing. You don't see us. the last motherfuckers off the Titanic. You know, I uh, went on Law & Order to do four episodes, and like now it's been 15 years. Who would have thought I'd be playing the police? You know what I'm saying? But that's acting. It's like if you're going to cast me as a street guy, that's not really acting. But if you cast me as a street guy,
my enemies and plot on them niggas. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm rolling like, you know, I don't, I don't like hip hop to make me happy. I, I, I listen to like new radicals. Don't give up. You got the music in you. I listen to that if I want to be happy. I'm not trying to listen to no rap to be happy. I'm bringing noise. I like hardcore shit. That to me was hip hop. I mean, when I start playing hip hop. Stay heavy. 
and don't be afraid to be heavier than the next cat. You know, I think Kendrick just dissed a few rappers and, knew, and the whole world went crazy because nobody says nothing no more. You know, read some books, go heavy, and you and and you're gonna be around. You know, people like Pop. People say I want to be like Pop. Well, Pop's writing the tough shit, but he's writing. Keep your head up. He's writing dear mom. He's writing heavy stuff. That's what keeps you in the business forever. You know, it's just like I don't know what you want to be. Do you want to? Who do you want to be? Do you want to be a pop star or do you want to be deep? Kendrick's dope. Kendrick is like an old spirit. But the thing of it is, Kendrick came out of Dre's camp. And if, to get past Dr. Dre, you got to be dope. Look what Game came out. Look at Fifty Cent. Look at Look at M. That's like me producing you. If I produce you, you ain't coming with no corny shit. I, I smack the shit at you. I snatch you out the booth. Like, I can't put you out. I can't put you out. You represent me, man. You got to be better than that. You know, I got a young artist, uh, Fetty DeMarco, who's took his nephew. Too heavy. I told him, I said, I don't care. I don't, I don't give a fuck about, don't rap about shit you ain't got. Rap about what's in the fucking cushions in the fucking in your couch, nigga. Rap about the fucking refrigerator when you open it. Rap that shit, you know? I got a rhyme where I say, I don't rap about shit I ain't got, hoes I ain't caught, shit I ain't bought, or gats I ain't shot. The game to me is too fucking deep. If I did, I honestly believe I'd die in my sleep. You know? I don't understand all that lying. I can't get with it. It's this corny. You know what I'm saying? It's real corny. In my book, but I'm an ill nigga, so, you know, and that's how I am with dudes. Like, I could be with, you could be my buddy, and I could be sitting at dinner with you, and you could go on some hate tangent. And I could be like, nigga, I can't fuck with you with all that hate coming up out of you, son. You gotta go address that, man. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta address that, man. Question. Yep. Um, I have a question. Um, is it possible to do a mixtape? Who? Hustle. I like Nipsey Hussle. How do you feel about that whole setup? You got to do what you got to do. Nipsey's from my hood of six. And, you know, it's a lot of politics, especially when you put the gang on your back. One thing I never did was allow the gang to get on my back, even though I was connected to six, these Harlem Crips, ain't trade gangsters. If you, if you decide you want to leave your house on tour with all them niggas, you can't fire them niggas. You know what I'm saying? So what happens is you got that gang movement, but the gang turns will start to hold you back. So Nipsey had inner politics. Cause I don't know, you from LA? In, 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 in LA you got 60s, but you got front hood and back hood. You got all these different divisions. You got the young 60s versus the G's. In one set, there's politics. So God bless him. I met Nipsey. He's a friend of my friends, and you know, good luck with everything he's doing. I mean, you got to figure out what you can do unique. You know what I'm saying? Selling mixtapes for hundred dollars a pop, I think that's genius. Fuck it. You know? <laughs> Steve Wynn told me told me a story about a kid. The kid was selling races. The kid had a pencil, and the kid said that this pencil is special. Because when it runs out, you can screw it on the end and it gets sharp again. And then there's a little thing on the end. And if you make a mistake, you can make remove the mistake. Ten thousand dollars. The guy said, "Well, why make that worth ten thousand dollars? That one got to sell one." <laughs> so you know, if you say I sell a hundred tapes at a hundred dollars and you make a hundred grand, and this other kid's out there scrambling for five, maybe Nipsey's going to something. You know what I'm saying? I only need a thousand fans. Fuck everybody else. You know, I might go for that. That's a good work model right there. But hey, it also brought, brought a lot of attention. It's a good game. Let's do five more questions and let me do the sound check. Question. I, uh, does it form you have a foundation? Male awareness foundation? Yes, yes, yes. Myself and my man Mickey Benson decided to start a foundation called Male Awareness. Yes. Basically, 
because guys don't like to go to the hospital. We don't go to the doctor no. until we lay flat on the back. We get in, we like, I got a pain, I got a pain. When's the last time you seen a doctor? 30 years ago, you know? <laughs> and we trying to make, you know, young men go to the doctor, check yourself out. You know, like I'm in the gym every day. I just turned 55. I like to turn 55 last year, I'm about to be 56. It's like, Ice, you in shape. I'm like, it ain't, vanity is health. Did. My boys are dying at 45. My buddy at 47 just had a double bypass. You know what I'm saying? So now I don't really feel like I'll die from lead poison. I used to be more reckless because I thought I was going to get I was going to get hit with hot projectiles. So I say I'm gonna die, so I don't got to worry about it. Now I'm in another zone where I don't really think niggas gonna kill me, but I still dream about it. But I just gotta want to stay healthy, you know, for Coco, for my family, for the future. You know what I'm saying? I decided now, first I wanted to live young fast, now I want to be like an old 90 year old nigga talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> just not dying. Just I decided I just ain't going to die. I don't got time for that shit. <laughs> so you know, but you're going to have to stay healthy. You're going to have to compensate for the work you didn't do because you used to be a kid and you ran around. So yeah, we have a, a thing, it's called, what, what's the website, Mick? Mail MailAwarenessFoundation.org, and it's just for men, so they don't have to feel like they pussies and nothing. Just go there. You got all kinds of links. Check your prostate. That's kind of an interest. That's a very intimate moment. <laughs> <laughs> Brothers walk in, they go, so, so, yo, son, so what's the prostate? Up in the ass. <laughs> I might have to die. No, but you know. <laughs> If you check it out early, you can save your life. You dig? So it's a it's a good cause. You know, we I, I'm I'm running around with pink ribbons and shit. So why shouldn't I do something for the men too? You dig? We do that. Male Male Awareness Foundation. We all gotta stay alive. You know, for everybody else. Do four more. Question. I grow my perm back. <laughs> the last, I don't know, man. We're going to go another five, six. I don't know. I'm going to be, I don't know. The show is hot. We're getting better ratings than we ever did. We went through the stable leaving growing pains. The fans thought they were going to commit suicide. Now they've accepted the fact that Chris wants to be an actor and move on and do other things. He gave us 12 good ones. Now we got Danny Pino. We got Kelly Giddish. I don't know when it's going to end. I would like to transcend to be Dick Wolf. I, I, that's why I'm working into doing my own films. I have TV uh, ideas that I've been pitching. So I want to be a producer and keep stuff on the air. You know, Because I think that film is the natural uh, journey for Ice-T. You know, I, I've done music. I've done books. I've done acting. So now let's put it all in one picture. You know, now you, I can do the music, I can show you the image. Yeah, that's what I want to do. What happens to your character? What the fuck? I don't know. I mean, I don't like that shit. <laughs> I don't know what happens to my character next episode, sweetheart. I do not know. You know, it's funny because you, you read the script and it's like, Ice got shot. I go, I'm looking for a line like later. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm talking here. <laughs> Shot on 45, I'm talking on, okay. Because that's how they, they'll blow you the hell up. On that. <laughs> you got to be careful asking for raises. But I think I bring an interesting, real talk, real talk. But I bring an interesting demographic. Television is about demos. So you got a white demo, you got a female demo, you got an urban demo. And fortunately, I've been able to keep that urban demo locked. So if they're going to get rid of me, who they going to bring in? You follow me? They're going to have to replace me because they don't want to lose that demo. So I don't know. I mean, the only person I think they could probably replace me was like Queen Latifah or somebody. <laughs> you know, that, 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 that fits that same. Because you got to remember, my fans that were rap fans now watch Law & Order. So they've matured with me. So my, my fans now sit home and watch my show, so I've been able to stay with my fans as they grew. If I was still only rapping, I would I would have lost them at some point. There's only a few people that have been able to jump that, like Jay-Z, and just stay 
right in that mix. And that's maybe one person that's been able to pull that off. I can't really name somebody from my era that's and bust around. And it's difficult. It's difficult because they want you to do kid shit to stay in the young market. And I ain't doing no kid shit. Fuck that. Three more questions. Yeah. Uh, after that show in Texas, are you going to take body count for a couple days? It's difficult to go. What the fuck is Buzz? Is it bomb? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, shit, it's a good place to whack me. If they whack us right now, they got a lot of us. Okay. Uh, yeah, paranoia is a safe state of mind. Okay. Uh, body count. It's difficult for me to tour because of Law & Order, where I work five days a week, so I can only do spot gigs. So we'll perform, but then, who knows, maybe over the summer during hiatus, we'll go. I'm more than likely to take them on the road overseas first, because overseas crowds, just, they're just better. I hate to say it. I think we're jaded here in our country. You know, oh, Metallica's playing down the street. I'll see him next week. Yeah. When you go over to Eastern Europe, the motherfuckers come on bicycles and shit. <laughs> Nothing else happening. They only hit two channels, so <laughs> that show's fucked up. A lot. <laughs> two more. Well, right now, uh, I don't know what to say. I, I could speak a little bit on it, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about doing a podcast. Podcast is in the air. Mickey Benzo just brought me that. I didn't even know what a podcast was, but I think I could do a fly podcast a couple times a month. And then Ice Loves Coco is in talks to kind of translate that into a talk show, kind of a thing where you saw Ice Loves Coco, now you can come over to our house and chop it up with me, so the dog. It's called, right now, I'm working the title is From the Sex, a late night talk show. So, yeah. So you can get more of this. Get more of this. <laughs> it's just honesty. That's it. Last question. My vision was fucked up. Because my vision was hustle, steal, gangster shit. That, I thought I was just going to be so, I was just, you know, like, I was so into that world that I never in a million years imagined I would ever be legit. I would ever carry an ID. I'd ever have my own real credit card. I wanted to be an underworld figure, you know? But all the cats that I looked up to started catching bids. All the, t all the cool guys that I thought were the shit, the bosses from my hood, started dropping. And they start calling me like, Ice, don't come here, man. Get out, you got a chance, man. White people like you, man. You know, <laughs> laugh, you laugh, but that's a sad thing. A lot of black people have a problem crossing over into the white world. So they, they, they figure it out. they like, I, you got the gift of gab, you got conversation, you got light eyes. You can get in. And then if you get in, you can get us in. You did? So I hated my friends. Now I'm talking about cats coming through a life. Like 80% of my team ain't coming home, you know? Because you have to raise the risk to raise the profit. That's the thing that people don't understand about the game. So when you hustle and you get that bend, you're gonna have to do three times that much to get that house. You're gonna have to do five times that much to keep that house. And every time you escalate the game, you, you create other new people, the wolves, the jackets, the killers. And uh, it gets dangerous. I've been hit twice. so. I don't advise that route. You know, I'm like, get in and get out quick. Uh, I don't knock people that are doing it, but you gotta know there's a there's a there's a expiration date on that hustle eventually. And nowadays, fuck. At least when I was hustling, there was a code, man. There was a code. You watch first 48. These niggas sit before they get in the car. <laughs> These niggas tell like, oh wait a minute. I seen one dude take. The Cops around like, you know, I'm undercover. I'm going to take you around and, and show you whatever. So you know what? It's like the game that I was so true to doesn't exist anymore. So I can't play this new game they play. You know, telling and 
just doing your boy wrong or doing other people. Like, I've never been a do low nigga, you know? This do low people, they like doing low. They get off on it. That was never me. I'm an orphan. I'm a survival cat. I have no problems with nobody. I just have to defend my area. Because if you put me on the ground, I'm, I probably won't ever get up. So I can't allow you to put me on the ground. You got to go. Yeah. That's really where my gangster lies. It's not, I'm not an a, a aggressive individual. I'm, I tell people, I'm as cool as you'll let me be. I'm as cool as you'll let me be. Yeah? Okay, y'all got to get the fuck up out of here. <laughs> Go to wherever they got you holding so we can do a little quick private sound check. Please give me that uh, respect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. No, no pictures right now. We're going to keep it moving. Cause we